Medicaid scorecards are here. We should support the notion of measuring quality, but there's some work to be done to make them great. Again, sorry, this is Healthcare Triage News. Last week, the Trump administration released the first set of Medicaid scorecards that allow you to see how states compare on tons of measures. You can see who's eligible for Medicaid in your state. You can see who's enrolled. You can even look at measures of quality. As you know, healthcare triage is based in Indiana, so let's take a look there. Medicaid is available to kids age 0 to 1, up to 208% of the federal poverty line, age 1 to 18 to 158% of the federal poverty line, and CHIP covers the rest up to 250% of the federal poverty line. Pregnant women are covered to 208%. Parents are covered to 19% of the federal poverty line, but the Medicaid expansion, we've got HIP 2.0, covers all other adults to 133% of the federal poverty line. As of March 2018, there were 1,456,955 Hoosiers enrolled in Medicaid and CHIP. Since the exchanges opened in late 2013, an additional 336,281 people got coverage for a more than 30% increase in enrollment. That's pretty impressive. Quality charts all look the same for all of the different states. The leftmost diamond shows the 25th percentile. The middle diamond is the median and the rightmost is the 75th percentile. Each state is marked with a blue info bubble. With respect to quality, Indiana seemed to do pretty well. It was at or above the median in all measures of access in primary care. Here's percent up-to-date on immunizations by 13th birthday, for instance. You can see that Indiana is just below the 75th percentile with 77.3% of kids. Indiana did well in maternal and perinatal health measures and in the care of acute and chronic conditions and in behavioral health care. They could improve the percentage of kids with at least one preventive dental service, but again, not too bad. This is the first time that we've had comparative data like these released from CMS, and we should applaud that. But, and this is a big but, there are some issues we need to acknowledge. Reporting is not mandatory, so there are many data missing. Only half of the states reported blood pressure statistics, so you're not looking at all the available numbers. Further, when data are available, they're not always measuring the same things. Some states only sampled a selection of Medicaid enrollees, those covered by managed care Medicaid programs, for instance. Others reported only on those not covered by such programs. Some states excluded people on both Medicare and Medicaid, which we call dual eligibles. All of this means you're sort of getting an apples to bananas comparison on many statistics. Some of these slices are generally healthier than others, and if you do or don't include them, the data can differ. Things would be better if CMS made the reporting of data mandatory, or at least made some rules about what should be reported. It's not clear they're going to do so. They haven't ruled it out, though. But overall, this is likely a good first step. You can't improve on what you can't measure, so it's good that we're seeing some data trying to compare Medicaid programs to each other. As with all report cards, though, we should be careful not to read too much into them at first pass. They're a work in progress, and there's a lot of room to improve. They're a good first step, many more are necessary. Do you like the show? Always helps if you subscribe or like the episode down there, and it also helps if you can support us through Patreon.com. That's a subscription service, which allows you, the viewer, to help support the show any way you like, even as little as a dollar a month. It will always be free, but anything you can give to help make the show bigger and better is always appreciated. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Crafty Geek, and especially our Surgeon Admiral Sam. Again, if you're interested, patreon.com slash healthcare triage. While we've also got you, we've also got some great merch at htmerch.com. And as always, my book, The Bad Food Bible, still available in stores. Appreciate if you pick up a copy.